Hi, I'm Kressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I start the Gingri Shaper by making patterns and casting the column sides. This project series follows the Shaper design by David Gingri. If you don't already have a copy of the book, get one. There's a link in the description. Following along with the book will make this project series much more informative. The first thing that I did was to make a split pattern for the column sides. I used that pattern to mold and then cast the two column sides. Later, these two parts will be attached to the column front and secured in the rear with upper and lower spreaders. The vertical slideways are attached to the front and this forms the column. The ram crank assembly is mounted inside the column. The ram assembly is mounted on top of the column and to that is attached the rotating head with downfeed mechanism. The work table and slide gets mounted to the vertical slideways. This represents about 80% of the components that need to be modeled in the shaper. There will also be an automatic feed and drivetrain to which the motor is attached. In this video, we'll only be focused on casting the column sides. Before I could cast either one of these parts, I had to first make the pattern. I use about a five degree angle on the table saw blade. When I cut the pattern pieces, this helps for assembly or provide a slight angle on the side of the pattern and this is known as the draft. The draft allows you to extract the pattern from the mold because the sides aren't perfectly vertical the pattern will slip out more easily. Oftentimes when making the patterns, it's just a series of cut it, check it, cut it, check it, cut it some more, check it, until the parts line up. Then I can assemble them and uh, get started trying to finish out the pattern. For the base of this column side pattern, it will make a part when it's cast that won't stand up perfectly straight, but that's okay. I'll have to do quite a bit of finish work to clean up the castings anyway. The draft is really important because it helps you to be able to mold the pattern and cast the part. I didn't have any quarter rounds, so instead of making a trip to the hardware store, I just used my router. I got the ledge lined up and then I drilled some holes through one side of the pattern and into the other. This is so that I can install nails which become the alignment pins. This is known as a split pattern. If you're following along in the book, you'll know that there are quite a number of split patterns in this project. Having a two-part pattern makes the molding process easier. The pattern is easier to mold because you don't have to hold an awkward pattern level. During molding, you can just put the flat surface of one of the patterns down on the molding board, ram up the first part of the flask, roll it, install the second half of the pattern, and then ram up the other half of the flask. Then you can separate and remove the pattern as a whole. That is the way I built this pattern. However, when I actually came time to mold, I didn't ha I, I never did get the cope half to stay in the cope. It always stayed attached to the drag half. I probably need to figure out a little bit better way to do that versus these nails that I've been using. If you have any tips, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Then I sanded down the wood filler that I'd used to make fillets and kind of smooth out the sides of the pattern. And I drilled some holes for screws as well as fillers for the screw holes. And these are used for extracting the pattern from the mold after ramming up the sand.
The coat of lacquer effectively seals the surface. And this is important for molding so that the pattern doesn't absorb moisture and it creates a smoother surface finish for extraction of the pattern from the sand mold. For molding the column sides, I did have to make a special flask. The other flasks that I have weren't big enough to mold this particular part. I pretty much followed the instructions in the book, although there are some techniques like using pocket holes that uh, weren't mentioned in the book. The ribs are mentioned in the book, as well as having a little dado cut on the interior sides of the flask. Put a little chamfer on the lower edge of the ribs. Starting this project was a Patreon goal. I really appreciate those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. You made this happen. I drill holes for alignment pins, however, in this one it was a little bit loose and I decided to go ahead and drill another hole to keep that from having slop in it. Practice molding attempt for the side panels. Gingry Shaper. My practice molding attempt didn't turn out so well. I thought maybe that had to do with the pins not having enough draft, so I tried to fix that with the Dremel tool. It may not be apparent, but the copath of the drag is rather heavy. I tried to be more careful separating the mold, but I think there's some improvements to be made to my molding bench setup, at least for separating the cope from the drag more reliably. The mold turned out usable, but I did forget to cut the sprue in the riser, so the top of the cope does look a little untidy. Okay folks, just lit the fire, getting ready to cast the shaper side columns, or at least the first one.
These columns are formed by venting, and I did that on the first one, but not the second pattern that I cast. This is super. I am going to put in a little bracket here above my molding bench with a pulley type thing so that I can uh, have a little bit of uh, mechanical advantage to help me separate the molds. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install a bracket on the wall. And then I am going to install a little piece that drops down. And then I'm going to put a board across the top. I'll attach a eye hook in the bottom of this cross board. Then use a couple pulleys. I'll have to rig up some type of support for the flasks so that that way it's not likely to tip the kind of initial test that I did, I just kind of had some loops and that kind of seemed to cause the flask to want to tip to one side. So we'll see how this goes. This is going to be the second of the column sides for the Gingri Shaper. And I've got the hoist installed so that should help me with rolling these molds and separating the mold when it comes time to pull the pattern. If you'd like to get early access to project videos as well as regular updates on the status of this project, go to makersize.com slash sign up. <laughs> oh yeah, that uh, worked. I used the portable foundry that I made for Maker Faire. It's so much faster than the kiln. It took me about 20 minutes to melt a full pot of metal and about another 10 just to get set up and pour the part. Beautiful. 
The second pattern, I also had a little bit more restricted gate. There's a little bit of a void on the inside associated with that uh, restricted gate. If this is your first time to make your size, check out the portable foundry video as well as the lathe project playlist. I will be building a playlist for this series and as I complete steps in the project, I'll add them to that playlist. I hope this project builds your confidence to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.